Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're making scalloped potatoes. Okay, this is a traditional scalloped potato recipe. Now you can put cheese in them if you want to, but regular scalloped potatoes are a baked potato in a white sauce with onions. Now, if you wanted to add cheese, you would need to add a cup of shredded cheese to this recipe. Um, most of the time, it's a cup of shredded American cheese. Uh, and you would put three quarters of it in your potatoes and about a quarter of a cup of it on top of your potatoes. But <clears throat> for the basic recipe, the, and this will serve four or five people, you want between three and a half and four cups of thinly sliced potatoes. Uh, and one of those little manual slicers like they sell everywhere now for around 10 bucks really works good for this And you can do it with just a paired knife, but you want to keep them as thin as possible And you definitely want to keep them all even because you don't want big thick crunchy pieces in your scalloped potatoes You want about a cup and a quarter of milk and it doesn't matter what kind of milk you can use anything in this You can use evaporated milk whole milk skim milk powdered milk whatever the more fat in your milk though the creamier and richer your end product is going to be now for every day i just use skim milk because we drink skim milk but if i was going to do them for a real special occasion i would use at least half and half maybe even heavy cream because it will definitely make them richer you need about two tablespoons of flour and if you want a gluten-free variety of this, you can use a heaping tablespoon of cornstarch. That's going to thicken it. And you want about a quarter of a cup of finely chopped onions. Um, this is about half of just a, you know, an average sized onion, not a giant one. You want two tablespoons of butter. And we're going to melt that so it doesn't matter if it's cold or room temperature about half a teaspoon of salt and a little pepper. I've probably got an eighth of a teaspoon in there, but that's to taste. You can adjust that up or down. And if you add cheese, you're probably gonna re wanna reduce the salt a little bit because cheese is kinda salty. Now, there's a lot of ways you can cook this. You can even cook these entirely in the microwave if you're in a hurry. But it's winter time and having the oven on is kinda nice in the winter time. So I'm gonna bake mine. Now to start them, you can get out a pot, go over to the stove, put your butter in it, saute your onions until they're tender, and then you can add your flour and your milk and, and stay in there and thicken your sauce, but you don't have to do all that. And there is a very slight, slight difference in taste if you saute the onions in the butter before you start baking it, but not much. For my palate, there's not enough difference in taste to make it worth the trouble of washing the pot. So what I'm gonna do, <clears throat> is I'm going to put my flour and my salt and my pepper in my milk. And if you're going to do this this way, you do want a glass um, measuring cup or put it in a glass bowl because I'm going to put this in the microwave. Go ahead and add your onions to this. You don't really have to. You can just layer your onions and your potatoes in your casserole dish but I put them in here because they pour out a little at a time and it kind of layers them anyway and it does kind of start cooking them a little bit. So add your onions and go ahead and put your butter in there. Now in my microwave it takes about two minutes to melt the butter and kind of heat the milk. It's not going to completely thicken it and that's okay because we're gonna bake it for plenty long enough to thicken it. All we wanna do is get it all mixed together good. It might take a little bit longer in your microwave. Okay, while your um, milk and butter and stuff are microwaving, you do wanna put some oil in your casserole dish. Um, you can spray it with nonstick spray or just wipe it with a little oil, that's what I did. And you wanna put a layer of your potatoes in there um, kind of depends on how many layers you want, either a half or a third. But like I said, you want to kind of layer that sauce in there. And if you're doing cheese, you definitely want to layer your cheese. Um, put, I don't know, maybe half cup in there or so. 
and then you're going to save some for the next layer and then save some for the top. keep an eye on this while it's in the microwave uh, because if it boils over in your microwave it is going to make a mess but two minutes in my microwave does not boil it over and that's on full power and it's a pretty strong microwave so you're probably safe with two minutes now you don't really have to heat this at all if you don't want to um, you can just mix your flour and your salt and your pepper and your milk and um, pour it in here and layer your onions and stuff and then put your butter on top when you get everything in your casserole dish and then when it's about half done baking you can take it out of the oven and stir it and finish baking it but I for me this just makes it cook a little bit faster and it doesn't really make any more of a mess because you've already got out the measuring cup anyway so I usually do this that way. I don't have to pull it out of the oven in the middle and stir it. I can just let it bake the whole time. Okay, pour some in your casserole dish and then add some more potatoes. You see my potatoes are kind of sticking together. You do want to bust up any big stacks like this is a pretty big stack of potatoes. Kind of bust those up a little bit so that the sauce can get in between them. If you don't give it a little stir when you pour the second half of your sauce over your potatoes, all your pepper will be in a big lump and a lot of your onions will be too. They'll settle to the bottom. Now, like I said, there is a lot of different ways you can cook these. You can actually cook these in a pot with a lid on top of your stove, um, bring the pot to a boil, then turn it down to a low simmer and stir them occasionally and they will cook just fine on top of the stove. You can cook them in the microwave. Microwave them about two minutes at a time, stir them, put them back in the microwave, two minutes, stir them, put them back in the microwave until the potatoes are tender. Um, uh, you can cook them just about anyway, but what we're gonna do, because it's winter, is we're gonna put them in the oven. And you're going to bake these for over an hour. So in the summertime, you're going to want to speed this up a little bit. And what I do in the summertime is I put them in the microwave for about half of the time. And then I just put them in the oven and brown them. So we're going to cover them with foil. <clears throat> because they're going to cook for so long, we don't want the top to burn. Put them in a preheated 350 degree oven for 35 to 45 minutes. It's going to depend on how thick your potatoes are. Now I have my potatoes pretty thin, but these potatoes for some reason take longer to cook than most potatoes. They're a very firm potato. And I don't know why, they're just a russet potato, but they, this particular batch is super firm. So I'm going to cook mine for about 40 minutes covered. Then I'm going to take the foil off and cook them for another 30 minutes to brown them. While we're waiting on our potatoes to finish up, um, there's something that I want to talk to y'all about. And it's serious because I've made notes. I don't usually make notes. But I was watching the news maybe a month ago, and I don't believe much that's on the news. But they were doing this story on how unhappy people were as a whole. Not just in America, but all over the world, people are more unhappy now than they have ever been before. And I think part of that is the fault of social media because so many of us put so much stock in what is on social media and how people react to us on social media. First thing I wanna share with y'all is social media has this great feature it's a delete button, has a little trash can beside it, and it also has a, 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 the ability so that you can block people. Now, I, I don't know how many of you have noticed or not, but most of the comments on the Hillbilly Kitchen videos are all positive. That's because I use that delete button and block button very freely. I do not worry about it. I don't want that kind of negative stuff on the channel or in my life. So I just 
delete the comments that are really bad. <clears throat> What's going on is Satan is using the internet to convince us that we are less than. And so many of us, I, I, don't, I don't know why preachers aren't preaching every single Sunday about what happens once you are saved, about who Christians are, because we don't understand who we truly are. And I discovered that because for the past three days, I have been reading people's New Year's resolutions on Facebook. And one in particular really, really touched me. And I'm going to send you a message when I get this video done and tell you that I read your comment so that you know who I'm talking to. But we don't realize who we are. We don't realize what happens when we get saved. We don't realize what it means to be saved and to have the joy of the Lord. Because Satan has filled our lives with all this worry and fear and depression and anxiety and hate. And a lot of it is really magnified with social media. So get that out of your life. Social media can be a positive influence the same way it can be a negative influence. We need to fill our social media with love, faith, hope, joy, peace, and forgiveness because those are all of the things that are of God. And those are the things that we should have in us once we are saved, once we are Christians. See, once you are saved, you are a child of God. You're not just you anymore. And you're not walking around alone. You actually have God in you. The Bible says the Holy Ghost comes and lives in you. So you're an heir to the kingdom of heaven. A child of God Almighty. And you have God in you. The creator of the universe. Who loved you so much that he died for you. So why are you worried? What are you afraid of? Why are you letting Satan's lies depress you and, and keep you trapped? What difference does it make what a mere human thinks of you if the God of the universe loves you so much he died for you? And the hatred, that's something that Satan has convinced us. He's convinced us that we have to hang on to all these hurt feelings and stuff. But God says, forgive it. I forgave you. Forgive your brother. Jesus said, forgive him 70 times 7. So here's my New Year's resolution. And I want you guys to help me with this. I want to truly spread the joy of God on the internet. And we can start with the comments in this video. By December 31st, 2020, it would be really great if we had, well, I've got a list of words here that are in the Bible that combat these tools that Satan uses to keep us down. Um, they combat the worry, the fear, the depression, the anxiety, the hate, and replace it with love, faith, hope, joy, peace, and forgiveness. So here are some of the words, and I looked these up to see how many times each one of these were in the Bible. Now, I couldn't possibly go over all of these verses in a video. So what I want you to do with me is to leave encouraging comments that have these encouraging verses in them so that if people see the video and start going through the comments, they, they will really be encouraged when they read the comments. The first one is bold. We were told to go forth boldly and share the gospel. We're not supposed to be afraid. So bold is in the Bible 11 times. Boldly is in the Bible 13 times. Fear not is in the Bible 331 times. Hope is in the Bible 130 times. We have hope because we have God in us, because we have salvation, because we know we've read the end of the Bible. We know we win. So you know, why worry about it? Why be afraid? <clears throat> joy. Joy is in the Bible 165 times. We truly need to show 
the world, the joy of salvation, the joy of having the Lord in us. If as Christians we walk around afraid and depressed and worried all the time, how are we possibly going to draw other people to Jesus? You know, how are they going to see our light? How are they going to see the hope that lives in us? <clears throat> Love is in the Bible 311 times. Charity, which a lot of times is translated as love, and charity is how we show our love for one another, giving to one another. Um, that's in the Bible 28 times. And I talked a little bit about um, giving to one another. You know, Peggy had sent some things and she sent some things because she said she was grateful to me because I shared my love for Jesus with her and she was able to see it through me. And that is so sweet. I mean, that's like just her saying that is just the greatest gift anybody could ever give me. But we should show one another that love more than just saying it. Peace is in the Bible 429 times. The peace of the Lord, that's that peace of knowing that we win in the end. It's that peace of knowing that you are saved. It's that peace of knowing that you have God with you. Faith is in the Bible 247 times. Forgiveness, 7 times. Forgiven, 56. I'm sorry. Forgive 56. Forgiven 42. That's a lot of verses. Like I said, there's no way I could put all those verses in this video. But we can fill up the comment section of this video with those verses and you guys can help me. Whenever you, like I said, whenever you don't have anything to do, maybe if you're feeling a little discouraged one day, you can add a verse and read some verses that are already here. And I would love to see maybe 2,000 comments on this by the end of the year that have all those verses in them. And don't worry about repeating a verse. If somebody's already posted it, if you're having one of those days where a verse speaks to you, post it again because somebody else needs to hear it too. And let's really make 2020 a year where we share the joy of the Lord and we combat Satan's assault on our joy. We put the put the verses out there. When you see those comments on Facebook that your Christian friends are leaving where they're worried or where they're experiencing anxiety and depression, give them a verse. Don't skip over it. Put a verse in there. And you can search online and find these and there is a great um, Bible app that you can put on your computers. It's called eSword. You can look up any word and get every single verse that's in the Bible that has that word in it. Uh, and it's, it's wonderful. It's free. Look that up if you don't have it. But 2020 is the year for the joy of the Lord. Let's spread it. Okay, now these have been in the oven for about an hour and 10 minutes. And you can see it's really runny now. So you, when you take it out of the oven, you want to let it sit at least five minutes before you serve it. And that'll give this liquid in here time to thicken up. And it won't take more than five minutes and it'll get nice and thick. You want to make sure your fork goes through your potatoes. And my fork is going in my potatoes just fine. Don't poke them too many times, though. You'll mess up all your nice brown stuff on the top. And if you want them a little bit browner, you can cook them a little longer. Um, my top is just lightly brown, but that looks better in the photos for the video. I really like them a little bit browner, so I would probably cook these maybe another five minutes until the top gets just a little bit browner for me. But you do them however you want them. You can really add any cheese. Like I said, usually in scalloped potatoes, if cheese is added, it's American cheese. But you can do anything you want. About a cup is all you need for this recipe, though, if you want cheesy potatoes. I really appreciate y'all joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. Please click like and subscribe before you leave if you haven't already. Don't forget to leave those comments and come back and read through them later. And until next time, Remember to put God first.